Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how we can remove distortions in our photos caused by the camera lens, as well as correct perspective distortions in our images. I'll start by zooming in to 200% to make sure that we can see the chromatic aberration in this image. Chromatic aberration is a misalignment of pixels caused by the lens, and it's typically more visible towards the edges of an image, especially in high contrast areas and when using a wide angle lens to capture the photograph. Here we can see the misalignment with the red and green color along the edge. In the lens correction panel, I'll enable remove chromatic aberration and just like that, Lightroom Classic fixes the problem. Next, I'll enable lens profile corrections. Lightroom Classic looks at the EXIF data in the photograph, and if it finds a profile for the camera make and model, or lens, it will correct it. Now some cameras apply lens correction to the RAW files in camera. If this is the case, you'll see a message in the panel stating that a built-in lens profile has been applied. By default, Lightroom Classic also removes any lens vignetting. Although some photographers prefer to leave the vignetting, if you're going to crop the image, the vignetting might appear uneven. So I prefer to have the profile remove it and then add my own custom vignette using the effects panel or the masking tools. To correct the perspective of an image, we can use the transform panel. For best results, you want to apply lens correction first. Then I'll select the transform panel. Now these upright modes typically work better on RAW files compared to non-RAW files because Lightroom Classic can take advantage of more reliable metadata like the focal length. The auto upright option isn't perfectly straight, but it's gonna have a bit more of a natural look. Level will try to straighten a horizon. Vertical pays attention to the vertical lines and Full puts equal emphasis on both the vertical and horizontal lines that Lightroom Classic finds in the image. We can also use Control plus Tab on Mac or Windows to cycle through the upright options. For more precision, we can use the Guided Upright option. Now we can drag out up to four guides in the image. You can zoom in and do this, but I prefer to use the Loop option, which will magnify the area under the cursor. So the first guide that we drag out isn't going to change the image, but when I drag out the second guide, Lightroom Classic will start correcting the perspective. I'll drag out a third guide, and then a fourth guide, and if we need to, we can readjust the endpoints at any time. You can also manually adjust the perspective to remove or add a distortion. As I drag the vertical and horizontal slider, we can see the distortions being applied. Let's double click the sliders in order to reset them. We can also rotate the image and we can change the aspect. Now, if I drag too far and I go beyond the edges of the original photo, we'll see blank areas around the images in the preview area. We can choose to constrain the crop to hide the blank areas. And in this image, it works fine. But if there was important information around the edges, then I might want to be sure that as I take the photograph, I include more information. So I would photograph a bit wider, not so tight to my subject. I can remove the constraint option, but it doesn't reset the crop. So I'll select the crop tool and then choose reset. Then we can use the scale or the offset sliders to reposition the image within the canvas. Now the aspect slider can be very handy when applying these perspective corrections on photos that have people in them because people tend to get a bit stretched or a bit squished at times. If I want to display a grid, guides, or a layout image, I can select view, loop overlay. I'll select grid and with the grid overlay visible, if I hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows, I have options for size and opacity. I can then click drag left or right on the size to decrease or increase the size of the grid. And I can click drag left or right on opacity to decrease or increase the grid opacity. To hide the grid, I can use the menu and then select it again. I can also choose to show a layout image. Now this is a great way to preview what your image would look like if you know that it's gonna be used in a layout with text or in a template. Here, I'm going to select a simple PNG file that I created in Photoshop that has my logo on a transparent background in the lower right-hand corner. 
Now we can see a preview of what that would look like overlaid on this photograph. But this is just a preview. It's not actually going to apply the image, but we can use it as a guide when we work in the develop module. All right, let's disable that. Excellent. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.